Hey, you know what, Perry the Platypus? We always do this thing where I tell you the content of the video first, and then at the end I talk about the sponsor. Well, why don't we mix it up a little this time? I will tell you about the sponsor first, and then tell you the video. You, you know, mix it up, you know, let's see how it goes. Funding for Shaperillus is provided by Proton VPN. Today's sponsor is a community-supported, highly secure VPN device. With Proton VPN, you can protect your privacy by hiding your IP address, browse the web securely, even on public Wi-Fi, and visit blocked or censored websites. It's the only free VPN service that has no privacy-invading ads, no malware, no bandwidth limits, and it doesn't secretly sell user data. They have a high-speed global network with hundreds of servers in over 30 countries on six continents. You can easily log into the app and connect to the fastest server with a single click. But that's not all. There's also Proton Mail, the world's largest secure email service. It automatically applies end-to-end -end encryption to your email so that no one but you and your intended recipient can access your message. Proton Mail allows users to send password-protected emails to non-Proton Mail users, keeping these messages secure and private. Both Proton VPN and Proton Mail are headquartered in Switzerland, home to some of the world's strongest privacy laws. And the most basic Basic accounts for Proton VPN and Proton Mail are completely free. If you want some delicious, nutritious, free security, sign up with the links in the description. When I made my Disney Renaissance ranking, a surprising number of people asked me where Emperor's New Groove was on the list. To that I say, YOU FOOL! That's not part of the Disney Renaissance, but it could have been. Emperor's New Groove famously started out as an ambitious, dramatic musical called Kingdom of the Sun, but it ran into tons of production problems as well as having to cater to the new direction Disney animation was taking. Musicals were out comedy was in. Especially after the super serious Pocahontas and Hunchback wound up financial disappointments. The history of this film's development is absolutely fascinating, probably more so than the final product. With that said, does that make the not so ambitious screwball comedy final product a disappointment? No. Well, maybe. Well, it's complicated. Reading up on Kingdom of the Sun, it sounded truly epic. I would have loved to see it in its entirety, and it's a shame it never came to fruition. Hell, Yizma's cut song, Snuff Out the Light, is phenomenal, and it really makes me wish the final film at least kept the musical format. Lord knows the runtime could have used it. As a whole, I just don't adore this film quite as much as the vast majority of the Renaissance films, and it's not just my musical bias. It's just that the Renaissance films felt a lot grander in general. I feel like this movie lacks that one zing factor that could have elevated it to being a true masterpiece. And I do wholeheartedly believe Kingdom of the Sun would have been better. But with that said, hell yeah, this movie's great. It has its own zing factor in the form of not only some of the best comedy and zaniest animation in Disney history, but it legitimately has the best character arc Disney has ever put out. Yeah. This loony-ass comedy has an amazing grasp on how to develop an unlikable protagonist and put them through a dynamic arc that makes them lovable by the end. How do you do that? Well, it's time to find out. Pull the lever, Kronk! Wait, what the? 24 Frames of Nick? From the YouTube channel 24 Frames of Nick? Is that what that lever does? Why, why, why do we even have that lever? Oh jeez, oh god, Kronk my boy, you gotta stop pulling these wrong levers dude, it's becoming an issue. But I guess I'm here now, on Sassafras's production channel. This is my channel now, I'm about to Yzma this shit and overthrow. Alright, so Emperor's New Groove is a great movie despite its hellscape of a production. But as a kid, you don't realize any of that. You don't know how movies are made, you don't know the magic of the filmmaking process, all you care about is a colorful movie doing pretty things and making your fist bump in the air. And guess what? This movie has plenty of that. I want to talk about why this movie was so special to me as a tiny little dork. This movie is special. This movie is incredible. You got all these Disney movies, part of the Disney Renaissance, all these classics. But like, as a six-year-old boy, you don't care about any of that. All these Disney movies with massive stories and heart and love of the personal and self, all that stuff. Blech. But Emperor's New Groove is a movie for the bros. It's a movie for the homies. It's it's a bro movie. I mean, look at Kronk. He is exclusively a dude bro. This was that kid movie that I adored growing up because it taught me friendship between two dudes for the first time. You got David Spade and John Goodman putting aside their differences to survive. David Spade Llama is literally a piece of trash in this movie. He fires people for no reason, forces people to bring him up 300 flights of stairs. I mean, he's evil. He's an evil dude. He even hurts John Goodman and makes him feel like he's gonna be homeless. Yet, despite 
despite that, they are forced to bond, forced to create real friendship. This was a friendship that I actually was interested in. What kid wouldn't keep their eyes wide open with full attention while a llama is wearing lipstick? I mean, come on, dude. Kronk is such a bro, I can't argue with that. He's ridiculously funny, often in ways that don't make a ton of sense, but end up being super funny anyway. And that's something that's great about this movie. It's thorough engrossment in nonsense humor. But there's a difference between nonsense for the sake of appealing to two-year-olds and nonsense in terms of telling jokes that are so absurd and inexplicable that you really have no choice but to laugh. See, there's an art to nonsense humor. The idea is to present us with an absurd scenario or joke that doesn't follow any sort of conventional logic, deliver the joke quickly, then promptly move on without acknowledging it. Take one of the best jokes from the formerly great show Rick and Morty, when they land on a corn on a cob planet. Get in the ship, sweetie! What? Get in the damn ship! Everything's on a cob! The whole planet's on a cob! Go! 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 Why is that so funny? We don't know. It just is. Don't overthink it. Emperor's New Groove employs this humor to a T. Look what I can do. <laughs> what? What does that have to do with me? No, no. He's got a point. It hits us with these zany jokes one after the other, and they just land. The tone is set because of these fantastic gags, and the energy is always high without being obnoxious. But it's not just nonsense humor. The animation and voice acting also work together to bolster the comedy and offer a ton of entertainment. Everyone in the cast is absolute gold and perfect for their parts. The unlikely duo of Eartha Kitt and Patrick Warburton is inspired. I love how hilariously vicious Yzma is and how gosh darn golly lovable Kronk is. It is physically impossible to not love Kronk. Disney has engineered the perfect character with this bad boy. John Goodman brings a lot to Pacha too. I think it plays a lot to his strengths as an actor that even though they're both obviously his voice, this character and Sully never sounded alike to me as a kid. Both of them have their own distinct warmness to them and Pacha's is through his relationship with his family. They have a nice dynamic and you really feel for him when this twerpy asshole threatens to kick his family off their land after six generations. David Spade's whininess as Kuzco is excellent as well. He has a ton of super funny little lines here and there. And the dynamic between Kuzco and Pacha is great comedically as well as just being really wholesome. Awesome. Though, it's got some problems. I really like how long it takes for them to bond and trust each other, but the movie falls into that trap of splitting them up before the climax through a big argument, and it's just so forced and tedious. Then Kuzco realizes like 10 seconds later that he was wrong, and he mopes. Then he makes up with Pacha after like a minute, then boom, they're running towards the climax immediately after. It's like all the emotional beats were kind of thrown onto a treadmill going at high speed, and they kind of crashed for me as a result. I can't say I'm a fan of how the movie undermines a lot of its emotional moments, like when Pach is really sad about his family home being uprooted, and then Kuzco pauses the movie to demand the audience focus on him. It's in character for him, but like, I was really getting wrapped up in the emotion of the scene here, and that's how I feel about quite a few parts of their friendship. I just wish they had taken things a little more seriously at times. Are we just not gonna act like the bridge scene isn't the most iconic scene? Spanning about four minutes, it's these dudes entire arc just crammed inside. They're suspended from the bridge, just fighting each other, angry about each other's actions until they almost fall to their death, but are conveniently saved by each other by literally having each other's backs. Their backs touch and save each other. You're literally watching the metaphor unfold. You're watching visual storytelling unfold before your very eyes. And as a kid, this just made me feel really good. It's like when you insult your homie because you want him to do better. These four minutes are probably some of my favorite four minutes in like any animated movie. It's that cheesy, very clear visual storytelling that is used in the end of the movie to defeat the bad guy. Hell, Iron Man 2 ripped this shit off. Are we really gonna act like it's not iconic? It's like those trust falls in class where people fall on you and you gotta catch them. Except if you don't catch each other, you both die. And then they both have little innocent homie faces where they're like, <laughs> You saved me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're so cute. This is just wholesomeness. This entire movie just creates that wholesome bond of friendship where by the end of the movie, you feel glad that these dudes are just able to hang out. I mean, come on. The main theme is my funny friend and me. It's all about friendship and learning how to have that. I love this movie so much and it's an incredibly wholesome tale of friendship. Like I said, it's a movie for the bros. You got that right. It's also a great example of how much Kuzco is growing as a person. Which hey, why don't we talk about that real quick? Kuzco has the single most dynamic character arc in Disney history. Like Nick said, he's the biggest of assholes at the beginning of this movie. He insults everyone around him, throws a guy out the window because he accidentally ran into him, plans to destroy a family's home for the sake of building a theme park exclusively for him. It's not cool, bro. You can understand how power warped his young, impressionable mind and made him believe that he's the center of the universe. On top of that, this hilariously great line tells you all that you need to know. Why, I practically raised him. 
Yeah, you think he would have turned out better. Honestly, Yzma planning to kill him is kind of sorta not the worst thing in the world. Who's gonna miss him? So yeah, they accidentally turn him into a llama, and he accidentally goes home with John Goodman. Amazingly, he fully expects Pacha to take him home to the palace, despite not giving up on his plan to bulldoze Pacha's home. The idea of other people's feelings and desires don't even register with him. It is all about his needs and no one else's. He's basically the villain here, and that's great. So Pacha's just like, okay, have fun dying in the jungle, and Kuzco's like, I will. And Pacha's like, well, there's no Kuzco, then there's no Kuzco-topia takes care of my problem. Why is he Adam West? And yeah, rationally, Pacha knows that just letting this selfish asshole die will solve everything. But Pacha's just such a naturally caring individual that he can't just do that. Against his own self-interests, he comes to Kuzco's rescue. He's pretty much the anti-Kuzco, putting the needs of others before himself, no matter what the consequences. But Kuzco was not amused. He still continues to be blind to basic morality, even after this guy put everything on the line to save him. And I don't think that's his fault. This lad was spoiled rotten from day one, and I don't think being raised by Yzma, of all people, helped matters. He doesn't know better. He deserves a chance to be taught the error of his ways. And Pacha's kindness really starts to affect him a bit. And just like that, Kuzco seems redeemed. Wow, that was easy. Except no, that's not realistic at all for this character and the movie knows it. Quick, help me up. No, I don't think I will. Kuzco's betrayal here feels so real, and it's kind of astounding that Disney would let their protagonist be so heartless. You know, side note, why hasn't Emperor's New Groove been in Kingdom Hearts yet? It makes way too much sense. Heartless, look at that. Uh, amazing, wow. Anyway, after the bridge scene that Nick talked about earlier, where these two have to work together to avoid certain death, Kuzco just completely instinctively saves Pacha from falling without even thinking about it. You could've let me fall. Come on, what's the big deal? Nobody's that heartless. <gasps> Honestly, it's just super wholesome to see Kuzco doing something selfless for once and trying to deny it, with Pacha knowing the truth. And while Kuzco insists he's still gonna build Kuzco-topia, I think we, as an audience, know the truth too. Kuzco's remarkable character arc of learning to put others before himself has been set in motion. And y'all know the rest. The diner scene is absolute comedy gold. Probably my favorite scene in the movie based on how great the comedic timing is. Again, nonsense humor plays into this perfectly. There's no reason Yzma and Kuzco shouldn't be able to notice each other coming in and out of the kitchen constantly, but it's hysterical and filled to the brim with manic energy. Kronk's revelation in the middle of the night is hilarious. The slapstick Pacha's family puts Yzma through is hilarious. That chase scene is so damn good. The climax is creative, thrilling, and wonderfully animated with heaps of Delicious and nutritious? You guessed it, nonsense humor. Hey, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? You're excused. Anyone else? No, no we're, 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 good. Good. we're good. Why is the cow the only one who wants to go home? By all accounts, this doesn't make sense. But who knows, man? It's just funny. Don't ask questions. And now for the moment of truth. Kuzco needs that potion to turn back into a human. It's right there. But Pacha's about to fall. This is his big test of morality, and he passes with flying colors. Kuzco's arc of putting others before himself is finally complete, and it's- My fridge just turned on. That's fine, we're gonna finish the recording anyway. I don't care if it's in the background. Uh, we're leaving this in the video too, why not? Kuzco's arc of putting others before himself is finally complete, and it's immensely satisfying. Because he was so arrogant and selfish during the first half of the movie, and because he spent so much time with Pacha slowly learning the error of his ways, the movie absolutely earns this moment. And so they use teamwork and a well-placed Kronk to finally get the vial and win the day. This of course leads to an epilogue where Kuz Juice tells Papa that the hill he lives on is really dumb, and his summer home is going somewhere else. And honestly, that feels way more authentic and wholesome than if Kuzco had a big emotional scene where he said, hey, I was wrong, I shouldn't have been so selfish. That was my mistake. Kuzco is saying that in his own comedic, arrogant way, but it perfectly expresses his now selfless intentions. It's honestly really beautiful because it feels true to his character. So yeah, Kuzco really is the best Disney princess. He's the most dynamic protagonist in Disney animation history because he literally goes from a villain to a hero, and you believe every moment of his transformation. What a guy. What a movie. So yeah, Emperor's New Groove isn't perfect. It can rush through some of its emotional beats at times, and not every single joke is a winner. Plus, it's hard not to long for what could have been with this movie. Seriously, I listen to Snuff Out the Light all the time. It's wildly fantastic, and it's sad we'll never see it animated. But you know what? 
that's okay. This movie is wonderful as is, with its delightful energy, great animation, sharp writing, lovable characters, everything. Everybody knows it's great. I honestly haven't met a single person who doesn't like this movie. You gotta see it if you somehow haven't already. Damn, honestly, it's one of the few Disney movies I would have loved a sequel to. If only such a movie existed. Oh. I take it back.